It's good to brew, baby. What is up, beauty? Bitch, what? Millsy. Back with hometown commander. Back for another episode of Millsy Brews. The short brew my version 1.0 deck list of the commander in front of us on my quest out brew a magic world. Today we are rocking in on week two of our Mergers at Karlov Manor content. And this set's been a ton of fun for me to brew around. Not because there's a lot of particular power, but just because there's a lot of interesting ideas for commanders and i think that's a good time because it's not always obvious and it forces you to kind of work for what you want um in the sense that um you get to have fun and put things on the paper uh that's not what we're covering today today we're covering a Nyak commander that uh on first read generally scared me um genuinely scared me not not um because uh not because it uh was bad because I think it's going to be probably one of the better Naya commanders of all time once once people uh, start building it. Um, and that's because uh, Wizards decided to give us a commander in Naya colors that cares about elves. I feel like that should have happened before now, but um, when you read this commander, you'll understand why. It's always the deck list. It's going to be down in the description below. Today we're talking about Voya, Jaws of the Conclave, a 5 mana 5 5 legendary wolf. Vigilance Trample Ward 3 it says whenever Voya attacks, we put X plus one plus one counters on each creature we control, where X is the number of elves we control, and we draw a card for each wolf we control. Now, there's probably a lot of people that are going to try to balance out that ability, right? Get a bunch of counters, draw a bunch of cards, but at the end of the day, whenever we talk about elves as a tribe, you know, we talk about elf ball, right? This idea that you just play more elves, draw cards, and get more mana. And, and I really think that I'm not going to stray away from playing a few wolves. Um, we get the cool ability that all three of our Tolsmir cards, the uh, legendary creature that previously made a Voya token, are all elves. So that's great. We're playing a few wolves in the deck. But in all reality, we're going to focus on elves because elves do one thing really well. If you saw any of my content from the Lord of the Rings decks or anything like that, Elves just dump elves onto the battlefield, whether it's the mana dorks, whether it's tokens, whether it's uh, more elves, whether it's elves that tap for a mana for each elf you control, whether it's elves that buff other elves. They're good at just dumping elves onto the battlefield. And so Voya, I think in all reality, you know, if, if you have a good elf ball start by turn six or seven, could potentially be able to create a scary amount of power on a board. This deck isn't really even designed to be that turbo, you know, elf ball. It's not designed to be a, a top tier elf deck. I think if people really wanted to push Voya, this is one of those commanders that I think could be really scary. My favorite um, Naya commander of all time, Jet Mirror, is one of those commanders that I've seen just constantly punch tables in the face. Um, mainly because it is dangerous at what the value it gives, and I think that's Voya. Voya is very dangerous, and we are in a three color pairing where we can give Voya haste fairly regularly depending on what pieces we play so the goal here is to go pretty much fully elf tribal we're going to play a few wolves we're going to play some things that make wolves but at the end of the day we're going wide with elves we're going to use voya as kind of a pseudo crater hoof where we use it to buff our entire board and then all we need is a trample enabler to probably just end a game outright well talking about elf ball there's a lot of ways i could talk about elf ball um but in all reality, the the way that Elf Ball generally works is you start your early turns by paying by playing Elves that tap for mana, uh, and they come in many shapes and sizes. One mana, one drop Elves that tap for one mana. Uh, two mana Elves that can tap for one or potentially more. We have things like Gyre Sage, which taps for uh, green mana for a counter on it, which is going to work well with things like Voya. We get it into some of our three mana mana dorks tapping for a green for each elf we control is pretty popular with things like Priest of Titania and Elvish Arstruid. So the wider we go, the more mana we're adding um, to our repertoire. And we're basically just gonna keep going up the going up the charts, trying to play more and more elves each turn, get more and more elves under our control, whether that's using things like Elvish Warmaster to make tokens that are elves. Um or, or just making our elves bigger as they come in with things like Arwen or drawing cards or things like Beast Whisperer. We're just going to continue to dump elves onto the battlefield and take advantage of them being here. Um, we're playing a couple shapeshifters in Mirror Entity, Realm Walker, and Masked Vandal. And, uh, sorry, Antarian Muller. These are cool because they're going to count as both elves and wolves, but they all have pretty cool abilities. 
uh, mirror entity, allowing us to make all of our creatures bigger uh, for more mana. This can be helpful even if we can't get a bunch of tokens or counters on all of our creatures. With a trample enabler, we could just make all of them huge. Master Nano comes in with a little bit of destruction. Well, Realm Walker lets us cast elves off the top of our deck because it's most likely what we're going to choose since most of our creatures are elves. And then Torian Mauler is just going to get bigger. So without going too, 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 too deep into the elves, that's our goal. Dump elves onto the battlefield, go wide, get Voya down, put counters on creatures, win in combat. I think more often than not, we're going to be able to do that just because uh, the elves are so good at just dumping themselves onto the battlefield. And we have enough ways on our deck with some protection to protect Voya, keep him out there, and then get the continuous value uh, with the, that way. I want to talk about um, a couple key ways we can end the game um, other than just Voya dumping counters on all of our creatures or in conjunction with it. Um, Bremelwood Paragon is an elf that says uh, each creature we control the plus one plus one counter on it has trample. Well, bango, Voya's going to put counters on all of our creatures. Boom, now they have trample. Azuri Renegade Leader is a very popular elf finisher for five mana, giving all of our elves plus three plus three and trample till the turn. Boom, there's more trample that we have access to to take care of. We're playing things like Garrick's Uprising to give all of our things trample, allowing them to push through for more damage. Um and getting in for more damage that we're playing on civil on rest each creature with a plus one plus one counter on it would deal damage to a, uh, a permanent or player deals double that damage just some ways that we're trying to chip in for having us deal more damage but what i love about void specifically and these colors specifically is we get to play a couple cards that i really love but i think they go up to the max here we're playing shalai and halar a really great um commander in its own right but it pairs really well with voya because the ability says whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control it deals that much damage to target opponent well if we have a 10 board full of 10 or 11 elves and we're putting 11 plus one plus one counters on all of our elves shy lion halar could potentially just end the game on the spot if our opponents can't deal with it you pair this with a card that works exactly like it and all will be one an enchantment that does that exact same effect whenever you deal, whenever, you know, you put counters on a permanent or player, it deals that much damage to target opponent, creature opponent controls, or a planeswalker. And now you have two different cards that with Voya just run the risk of ending the game before you even get to combat damage. But it's not just that. It's not just that. We, we want to have some fun in combat. We can use things like Aggravated Assault. We're a tribe that makes so much mana that we could probably just outright pay for Aggravated Assault multiple times. And the best part is that because you're entering into a new combat and Void is going to attack again, you're going to get Void's ability again and again during these combats. And the cool part is we're untapping all of our creatures, which means if we're using the elves we need to use in order to pay for aggravated assault, we're going to be able to continue to keep using them to pay for aggravated assault, getting into those combats. And we're probably going to have to end that. We're going to have to end that game eventually, whether it's our opponents blocking out and eventually not having blockers left or trample just working us through in a combat or two i see a very possible scenario when you sit down and go uh, you know across from a Voya deck if there's going to become a combat where you look at the board and go i can block this turn but next turn i'm dead or i can maybe block this turn but next turn i'm dead and i think our goal as the Voya deck is to make that you know this combat instead of next combat Another card that I love throwing in on the side of that is something like Legion Loyalty. And the reason is, is because what a lot of players don't think about when we think about attack triggers is that we get to put our attack triggers on the stack where we want to. Meaning, we can place every creature's myriad ability with Legion Loyalty on top of Voya's ability. Meaning that when we get to Voya, we'll, we'll, tech, we'll hopefully have, you know, three times the amount of creatures we have attacking if all our opponents are still in the game but if not at least you know twice the number and then void is going to go off giving them all counters making that probably on you know a very bad situation for your opponents and something they really are going to have a hard time dealing with so this in conjunction with this all will be one schlein alar business or even just the aggravated assault game plan means that i think that even if we get into a game where our board gets a little mucky and we're not sure how we're going to get through our opponents, I think we're going to find a way to find one of these that just take a lot of advantage of our opponents and just have um, a really good time. Grand Warlord Rada is an elf, gives us a mana for each creature that, that, uh, that attack until end of turn. This pays 
uh, really well with aggravated assault if that's the way we want to do it. it will, all we have to do, right? Tag with five creatures, get that five mana, pay for the aggravated assault in the next, you know, main phase. And keep that going. Uh, a card that I hate, I have to keep um, including in decks and have to keep talking about because it's just so good at what it does is Roaming Throne. You would think in this deck we would pick um, Elf, right? Because there's so many Elves, but it really we want to pick Wolf, right? We want Voyeur to go off twice instead of once. And um, pairing with any of those other combos we talked about, it's just going to help us end the game. I could waffle a lot more, but I think in all reality, if you're familiar enough with Commander, if you're familiar enough with either Elves or Combat decks, you've already seen that we have a pretty good way to end the game. We just gotta get there. So let's get into our playtest. Keeping a three lander with O will be one. Clever Concealment for some protection. I absolutely love this card, and I love seeing it more. We have the War Master to get us access to more 1-1s. One and the Devoted Druid uh, for mana. Now, Devoted Druid is a great card with Voya because we can put a minus one, minus one counter on it to untap it, and as long as Voya is putting more plus one, plus one counters on it than we want to use with Devoted Druid to untap it, the cool part is if you try to put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature that already has a plus one, plus one counter on it, the counters just cancel out, meaning that with the right setup and enough creatures, we could potentially have infinite mana with Devoted Druid or an arbitrarily large amount of mana, which is something we have to keep in the back of our mind as well. Turn one, we draw a piece of titanium. That's killer. This is great. I I, um, I think we're in a lot of really good shape here. I get the farmland down tapped here. Um, if my opponent has a, you know, is playing a green deck, then maybe we risk the orchard here. But I really want to get this War Master down, turn two, so that when we play the Titania or the Druid, um, we could do that. Or conversely, we could do it the opposite way, get the Druid down now, and then get the War Master down the next turn with, with uh, Titania either way. It'll just come down to whatever we uh, choose to do. But turn two here, get that Plains down. I think it would make more sense to get the... Titania down first, um, just because then we play one of the elves, tap, put the other elf down, which makes a ton of sense. Turn the, uh, which is three, we draw a quarter calling. Great uh, creature search into our deck and allows our creatures to tap to help us out. I'd get that exotic orchard down and probably just play the devoted druid. We could then tap the Titania to play the elvish war master. Actually, I think we would, right, sorry, sorry, we would do it the opposite way, only because then we can get the one one off of the War Master, and the War Master does have a cool ability for 7 mana to give all of our L's plus 2 plus 2 in Death Touch if we need it, but well, I don't think we need it uh, this time. Alright, turn 4, we now have enough mana for Voya. Um, the only um, negative is we have none of our opponents can make red, then no, we cannot play Voya this turn, but if they can, we do. So let's think about our turn two ways. If none of our opponents have access to red, um, what I would probably do here is tap this exotic, or, exotic orchard for, I don't know, I guess anything it can be, and then play the Rift Scroll. When Rift Scroll comes in, we have to bring it back to our hand unless we, um, we have to sacrifice unless we bring something back to our hand, we put the audit back. That's one, two, three, four, and we just tap, you know, Dota Jurid or that to get Voya down. Now, Voya's not an elf, so unfortunately not going to trigger that 1-1 um, one, one from the War Master, but now we have five creatures and I believe a floating mana. We could go deep into Quarter Calling if we wanted to here. I always like to leave Quarter Calling up. You never quite know when you can use it. But then again here, um, we are missing out on enough mana to, I think, really use it effectively. Now, let me think about this. We would have needed that red for Voya, so it's one, two, three, four. Maybe we tap the Devoja there. So we could still leave out enough mana with Priest of Titania to give us four green. Potentially get into this quarter calling for six, five or six, if we really wanted to on our opponent's turn. Uh, I'm trying to think what our best elf choice here would be. Uh, Marwin would be great if we had more in our hands. Shly and Halar would make a ton of sense here because once this Voya starts attacking. So I think that's, well, Shly is what, four mana? So my opponent's turn, we tap the Priest of Titania for four, five, six, seven, get into the um, get into the quarter calling, and we would go ahead and get Schley and Halar here. Uh, remember, it, the CMC just needs to be equal to or less than the number we paid, which is four, and I do believe that that Schley and Halar is four mana exactly. Let's go find out and double check, see if I did my math properly or if I got myself in trouble. 
But this is one of those creatures, I'm going to be 100% honest, we're going to kind of always want to look for. Um, only because it's going to help make Voya even more dangerous to our opponents. Did, uh, did I just miss it? <laughs> uh, Marwin. Seriously. There we go, Schleindelar. Get that out of the battlefield. And at this point, I think our opponents are pretty much knowing exactly what we're going to do. Cool part, War Master gets um, us another 1-1, one, one, so we're at 3, 4, 5, 6 elves. Uh, we need a shovel. Draw for turn. Put that exotic orchard back down. Oh, that's that's abs Oh, that's brutal. Um, we would have enough mana for the Legion loyalty. If we did that, let's think about it. We wouldn't have... We'd still need someone to have red in order to have double red to play all will be one. We would have plenty with the priest and double white to play Legion Loyalty, and we'd actually be able to leave probably both of these guys up for protection. Doing that, Devoted Druid and Warmaster could both make a copy of themselves if we wanted to. Uh, the one ones would make copies of themselves. Let's see, would that be worth this? Let's think about it. So Warmaster attacks, Shlein Halar attacks, Voya attacks. We get the copies of them, but of course they immediately die, right? Because we have to do the le the legendary rule. But we have, I said, two tokens, War Master. That's three elves. Let's see, two copies of each of them would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The Voya dumps counters onto all of them. That'd be one, two, three, four, five, five hits of twelve. Oh no no right no 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 sorry sorry it'd be it'd be it'd be twelve counters on all of them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and they're gonna be lethal just basically in itself so we would just play legion loyalty there tapping out the titania attacking with the war master we can tap we we can attack with the druid because it doesn't matter it's getting the counters with void when void attacks Schley and line gets counters so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah it's either it's either ten or twelve triggers of um. Of, a t of nine or ten tokens going on, which is just lethal to the board. So that just goes to show you how crazy this deck could be, um, depending on what we've seen. It's Shalinalar doing that. Now, if someone removes it, next turn we just dump, try to get that all we one down, or we have, I believe we have enough mana for this inspiring call, um, just to protect ourselves as well. But that just goes to show you some of the shenanigans that Voya can do. Again, I think this deck has a lot of potential to it. You can make this any way you want to. Again, I would go into the Shalain Halar or the Legion Loyalty or just having a ton of fun going wide and hurting my opponents. Um, but let me know, what do you think of this deck uh, down in the comment section below? Um, I, if you're interested in, a, in an Naya deck that can punch hard, I think this is a good one. You should take a look. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next time.